Hey y'all, it's Crypto Bo, and today I'm talking about a critical security flaw in the Trezor hardware wallets that you should be aware of and how to protect yourself from it. I got a comment the other day that was then spookily deleted telling me that there was a critical security flaw that had been found by the Kraken Security Labs in the Trezor hardware wallet and found this article on the Kraken Security blog, which I'll link in the description. It details the nature of the attack. It shows a video of how they did it and how to replicate it. The link to this article will be in the description so you can go and take a look at it if you want for yourself. Um, but I'm going to detail like what the attack was and again, how to protect yourself from it. And remember, if you're enjoying my content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to give a bit of a security extra for the super paranoid. Basically, there's a chip in all Trezor hardware wallets, either the Trezor Model 1 or the Trezor Model T called the STM32 chip. And that chip is where a lot of the secure math is done. And so it should not be readable. But if you apply electric shocks at very specific intervals, then you can get it to downgrade that read protection to allow you to read from there. And then all it takes is a brute forcing of you the pin code on the physical device in order to get access to all the wallets that are on there. Now, the nature of this attack is very advanced and it relies on a couple of assumptions. First of all, it relies on the fact that your hardware wallet is stolen physically. Not only that, but the people that steal it have to know that this tech attack exists and they have to know how to execute the exploit in order to get access to your keys. The third and most important assumption that this attack relies on is that it assumes that your accounts are not password protected using the Trezor suite. After this attack was published, Satoshi Labs, as the parent company of Trezor, responded on their blog going into detail of how the attack is executed and again, how to protect yourself from it which involves just choosing a strong password and password protecting your account. And it's part of the reason why I like Trezor so much is they're so upfront about the sort of the vulnerabilities that their systems have. They're not trying to hide any of this information. In fact, they're building in solutions so that this is not actually a problem. Honestly, for most people, a physical attack of this sophistication isn't even something you'll ever have to worry about. But if you are super paranoid, you can feel secure in just adding a password to your Trezor account. I'd suggest going and following Satoshi Labs on Medium because they've done this a couple of times. When people have made attack vectors apparent to them, they've immediately responded with solutions and ways to protect yourself. And honestly, again, like a lot of what they say is that this won't even factor into most people's threat model. But if it does, then you can secure yourself with a password. Not only that, but they have a great um, article on what is, you know, on what makes a strong password. But they also link to great resources that they've put out on how to conceptualize and remember a strong password. Their commitment to security and openness is one of the things I like most about Trezor, which is why if you want to pick up a hardware wallet, then go ahead and click the link in the description, head straight over to the Trezor store and pick one up from there. And this is the thing, buying a hardware wallet makes you your own bank, which means that you have to rely on yourself for security. That's the price of self-custody is you don't have a bank vault to protect you from attackers. But if you're smart and you understand what the security risks are and how to protect yourself from them, you can be pretty confident that your cryptocurrency is secure in self-custody. And as a little security extra, I'll link this article down in the description. But if you want to generate your own seed because you're afraid of supply side attacks, you can do that too. I will say this is a pretty advanced technique and at the point at which you're doing it securely, you should probably just be generating paper wallets as well because it's basically the same process. And in order to do that, you have to be pretty confident that you're operating in a secure environment. If you want to see me make a tutorial on how to create paper wallets and generate your own seed phrases for your hardware wallets, then comment below and let me know. Um, if I get enough comments, then yeah, I'll make the video. It's a little paranoid and maybe beyond the security needs of most people. But again, shouts out to Satoshi Labs and Kraken on keeping people aware of the evolving security environment and being very open about these flaws. If you want to learn more about the hardware wallets themselves, then you can click here. Or if you want to learn more about Kraken, you can click here. I'm CryptoBo. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.